Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. Let us join this activating God in worship. church i want to welcome all of you to this virtual worship service we are glad that you have chosen to to join us here online as we come together in this way to to praise and worship our god uh, i want to encourage everyone to to take some time to to share this worship service it's, it's easier than ever when you're worshiping online to to invite someone to church you can do this by simply sharing this worship service on your your facebook feed also uh, i want to share some announcements with you uh, we are hoping to return to in-person worship next week uh, very much looking forward to that we'll uh, be back at both our 8 30 and 11 o'clock worship services hope to see you there also we'll have an administrative council meeting next sunday at noon I uh, hope that you can join us for that. Uh, we'll have uh, no lunch as we often do, uh, 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 just as a, a, a way to um, keep ourselves a, a bit safer, but we will have our administrative council meeting at noon. Also, our finance team is meeting this Thursday, uh, January 20th. That meeting will be in the Burns House. Uh, also want to let you know that our ministry team kickoff breakfast uh, had been rescheduled for this coming Saturday. Uh, we've decided to go ahead and cancel that. I'll be sharing many of the things I wanted to, to share with our ministry teams as part of my pastor's report in the administrative council. So I hope you'll join us for that uh, and uh, um, we look forward to seeing you there. Friends, as we continue to worship, I want to invite you to sing along with us as we sing forward through the ages. The words will be on your screen so you can join us.
Let's affirm our faith together by reciting the Apostles' Creed. Would you join me? God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, and dead and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven. And sit at the right hand of God, Father Almighty. From this he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. <laughs> God has blessed us all with something to give back to God's church. When you choose to give, God joins your heartfelt gift to others to bring us all that much closer to God's kingdom. I invite you to give with an open heart. I invite you to join us in song again. We'll sing, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart. Join us. The words will be on your screen.
Well, kids, I want to invite you to come on over to your screen so you can join us for this morning's children's moment. But, but I do want to tell you something. Uh, uh, you know, I'm the preacher. I'm the guy in charge of this worship service. And, and all of you are just kids. And that's why we only have just a few minutes uh, during our children's moment uh, for you all. Because you're just kids. And I'm the preacher. I get 20 minutes or more just to, to get up here and talk about whatever I want. And that's because I'm the most important person here. I'm the leader. What? Well, we got some people here who don't agree with that. Uh, uh, I tell you what, let, let's look at the, our scripture passage today and see what it says. I'm sure our Bible will, will back me up here. Uh, I'm the preacher. Let me just consult our scripture here. It says, now there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. I'm confused. This seems to be saying that, that whatever we have to offer God, it's activated by God. So maybe I shouldn't go around bragging that I'm the best and I'm the most important. I'm sorry about that, kids. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we confess that uh, sometimes we get ahead of ourselves and, and we fail to realize that it's you who work through us. Thank you, Lord, for working through us. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Friends, as we come to a time of prayer, I want to encourage you to leave whatever prayer concerns you might have on your heart in the comments below. Uh, you can also send those directly to, to me if you'd like to uh, either keep them confidential or, or uh, just share them more directly with me. I encourage you to do that. Uh, but if you share them in the comments below, everybody can join us in prayer. I'm going to pray a prayer of confession for us today, then I'll uh, uh, have a declaration of forgiveness, and then let's join together in the Lord's Prayer. I'll begin in silence for you to pray for, for the prayer concerns left in the comments and, and our prayer list, and, and whatever might be on your heart. Let us pray. Almighty God, we confess that we have been led astray by the idols of our world. We have depended on our possessions, and we have not placed our trust in your grace. We have carelessly consumed the gifts you offer, and have failed to be faithful stewards of the earth's resources. We have sought security in the might of the sword, rather than the strength of your Holy Spirit. Forgive us, we pray. Lead us to true repentance that we might serve you faithfully. Through Christ we pray. Friends, hear the good news. Christ unmasks the idols of our world and frees us from slavery to all that would oppress us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now, would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Several months ago, I, I pitched to you all a, a new business idea I had called Christianity Insurance, where you could purchase an insurance policy to mitigate the, the risk and self-sacrifice inherent in being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Well, that didn't really take off, but I've got a new business idea that I wanted to share with you all this morning that I think could make our church lots of money in addition to helping us be a more faithful group of disciples. So here it is. I'm calling it the Church Member Faithfulness Index Score. We can further incentivize high. Maybe you just eat more than the average as doing a service project at C. Quantify through a score where you could purchase called Christianity Insurance, where you could purchase an insurance policy to mitigate the, the risk and self-sacrifice inherent in being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Well, that didn't really take off, but I've got a new business idea that I wanted to share with you all this morning that I think could make our church lots of money in addition to helping us be a more faithful group of disciples. So here it is. I'm calling it the Church Member Faithfulness Index Score. Through a proprietary algorithm based on a, a variety of inputs, the Church Member Faithfulness Index Score, or CMFIS for short, will quantify through a score where zero is the least useful, least faithful church member, and 100 is the most useful, most faithful church member. See, big corporations, uh, intelligence agencies, uh, credit monitoring uh, agencies, social media companies, and more are all using uh, all this kinds of data, all the data they can gather to compile individualized profiles on you so they can better sell you various products. Why should the church miss out on this opportunity. The CMFIS system will use some of the same big data techniques, ubiquitous surveillance and decision-making algorithms used by private sector companies and Big Brother to compile individual dossiers, each of which will assign individual church members and even visitors a, a proprietary CMFIS score that will allow churches to evaluate who are the most effective and faithful church members. And the churches have long been dogged by inefficiency due to being unable to effectively measure individual members' effectiveness at being disciples of Jesus Christ. Faithfulness is encouraged and effectiveness is encouraged, of course, by churches but without a good measuring stick. It's difficult to, to manage and evaluate. As a great business thought leader, Peter Drucker says, what gets measured gets managed. This new CMFIS product will do for churches what standardized testing has done for schools. So how exactly would your CMFIS be calculated, you might be wondering. I don't want to say exactly since it's a, a proprietary tool, but this instrument will take into account things like your level of giving, your church attendance record, the number of ministry and administrative teams you serve on, how many people you greet during the passing of the peace, whether you tuned in for virtual worship, how close to the front of the, the church do you sit, the level of gusto you sing with during the hymns, how often do you volunteer for things around the church. Furthermore, the, the type of volunteer work will be taken into account. You see, passing out bulletins as an usher before worship, that won't get you quite as big of a, a bump in your CMFIS as doing a service project at CFAT will. Here's one of my favorite features. Pastors will be able to, to log into this massive database and register when church members complain or gossip. 
If you participate in Sunday school, you volunteer at our monthly food drop, give out candy to the kids during the Halloween hayride, this will all help your score. But if you cost the church a lot in terms of services, it will ding your score. For instance, are we always having to, to pray for you on the prayer list or, or visit you in the hospital? Did you forget to bring a dish to the potluck but stay and eat anyways? Or maybe you just eat more than the average person at the potluck. That's fine, of course, but it will hurt your score a bit. Do you use more of the free coffee supplies than the average, thereby costing us just a little bit more? Well, we'll adjust your score accordingly. But wait, you say, it's not fair to judge a preschooler by the same scoring index as a fully grown adult. Well, this is the beauty of our proprietary ranking system. All these inputs can be adjusted based on your current life stage. And so, for instance, if you're a bit older and, and it's hard for you to stand during worship, we're, we're not going to ding your score too much for that kind of thing. But if you're uh, an able-bodied young person and you don't stand for worship uh, at the appropriate times, that's going to hurt your score. You might also be wondering, what are we going to do with all of this data? Every week we'll have an insert in our bulletin and it'll list all of the, the church members and beside their name will be their current CMFIS score, ranging anywhere from zero to 100. It'll bring full transparency within the church. I'm hoping we can even integrate it into our uh, online directory so you can just see everyone's score right there. Full transparency. Everyone will be incentivized to be more faithful as everyone else will be able to see your score. We can further incentivize high CMFIS numbers by, by giving perks to those with high scores. Uh, many new apps these days are, are sort of gamifying their platforms to, to leverage participation. Maybe the, the leaders uh, on, our, on our list could, could pick a, a favorite hymn the following week in worship, or they could go first during potlucks. And as a pastor, it'll help me better use my time. If you've got a, a high score, then, then you can get an appointment with me even on my day off. But if you've got a, a low score, then you might have to wait several weeks until I can squeeze you into my schedule. As you can see, this will not only revitalize our church, but we'll be able to, to sell this system to, to other congregations and enrich ourselves in the process. Okay, well, now that I've shared with you my latest, greatest business idea, let's read our scripture for this morning. Our scripture comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 through 11. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them and everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom. And to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy to another the discernment of spirits to another various kinds of tongues to another the interpretation of tongues all these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually just as the spirit chooses friends this is the word of god for the people of god thanks be to god well, I wonder what the Apostle Paul would have thought of my CMFIS system. I'm not sure I want to get into that, but I can tell you with a good deal of confidence that I think many within the Corinthian church would have loved it. You see, we know from Paul's letter that at Corinth there were various factions within the church. 
We see this clearly from the very first chapter of Corinthians. Paul writes, quote, Now I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you should be in agreement and there should be no divisions among you, but that you should be united in the same mind and for the same purpose. For it has been reported to me by Chloe's people that there are quarrels among you, my brothers and sisters. What I mean is that each of you says, I belong to Paul, or I belong to Apollos, or I belong to Cephas, or I belong to Christ. Has Christ been divided? Was cr Paul crucified for you? Or were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank God that I baptized none of you except Crispus and Gaius, so that no one can say that you are baptized in my name. I did baptize also the household of Stephanus. Beyond that, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to proclaim the gospel, and not with eloquent wisdom, so that the cross of Christ might not be emptied of its power. Friends, Corinth was a church with some major divisions. And a major goal within Paul's letter was trying to, to break down those divisions. Some factions within Corinth saw themselves as better, in part based on what leader they had followed into the faith, whether that was Paul, Peter, Apollos, or someone else. Likewise, there were divisions between those with money and those without money. Some would eat lavishly as part of their communion celebration. They had full meals, not just wafers and Welch's grape juice, even to the point of getting drunk, whereas others in the church couldn't even afford to eat. The divisions, however, most relevant for our scripture this morning was those centered around different spiritual gifts. Three gifts in particular seem to be uh, given some kind of, of privileged status by some within the Corinthian church. Wisdom, knowledge, and speaking in tongues. Paul had previously downplayed the importance of wisdom and knowledge in his letter. However, in our passage this morning, Paul, as one commentator puts it, relativizes and diminishes speaking in tongues as being no better or worse than other gifts. Without understanding the broader context into which Paul is speaking, it, it might be hard to pick up on Paul's clear agenda here to, to correct those within the Corinthian church who felt like their ability to speak in tongues made them more spiritual than those who could not. It was likely that the same elitist faction within the church that ate lavish meals for Holy Communion when others had nothing to eat and who displayed arrogance about who brought them into the faith. These divisions likely also reflected the native Greek Corinthian heritage of the elites versus outside immigrant Jewish folks living in the diaspora of the other faction. Paul corrects this elitist faction who, who values speaking in tongues in at least five ways in this passage. First, by putting them on the same level as many other gifts. Second, by sort of dividing it in half, if you will, adding the interpretation of tongues. The earliest known reference to this particular gift, which indicates that it was Paul's invention. Third, Paul subtly links the, the gift of speaking in tongues to the worship of idols in verse 2, part of the heritage of the Corinthian elite, but not necessarily those from the Jewish diaspora. The fourth and fifth ways, however, are more important than these first three. Fourth, Paul says that, that gifts are, quote, for the common good. Gifts are not done for personal edification. Fifth, and finally, Paul makes clear in his introductory words at the beginning of this chapter that, that no one can speak or exercise any gift apart from the presence of the Holy Spirit. In other words, no individual can boast about their gifts because it's God working through them. Gifts are not about an individual's performance, their effectiveness, but rather God working through them. The truth is, I don't think Paul would care too much for my CMFIS system. 
if the exercise of spiritual gifts can't be traced back to one's own individual effectiveness, then, then how can we create a, a scoring system that will allow us to, to compare and contrast whether my gifts, whether my level of discipleship is better or worse than someone else's? If it's truly God working through us, doesn't that make this whole comparing and contrasting thing rather meaningless? We can't compare how God works through one vessel to how God works through another vessel and say one is better or worse than another. Well then, Paul's words in our scripture this morning would, would seem to be the death knell for my latest business idea. Don't you think? <laughs> you people are so naive. Do you think most churches actually take this stuff seriously? You know, they'll gobble up the latest secular business advice before some obsolete theological conviction buried in some ancient letter written to a long defunct congregation. You see, our culture, our economic system teaches us that, that our, your value, it's based on your output. Your reward should, should correlate with your level of effort and your talents. In fact, I dare say this is an unstated conviction even of most Western Christians. But friends, this is not a Christian idea. The gospel of grace leans in a completely different direction. If we take Paul's teaching here seriously, if we want to claim the, the good news offered to us today in our scripture, then we must let go of something. We must stop all of our comparing, judging others for what doesn't seem like as valuable a contribution as what you give. You see, if we are giving whatever it is, uh, money, time, talent, uh, even prayer in a, in a way that it seeks to, to, to measure itself against what others do, then it's not God working through us. It's not the Holy Spirit. For God speaks the language of grace. When we give of ourselves truly, if it's a, a genuine gift, it doesn't need recognition. It doesn't need to be ranked relative to, to someone else. Its only concern is, as Paul says in verse 7, the common good. In the coming weeks, we will follow Paul's words to the Corinthian church as his admonition to them continues to unfold. As we travel through 1 Corinthians, may you think of church the way Paul advised the Corinthian church to be, a place for the common good, a place where a, a variety of gifts are affirmed and not ranked or compared, a place where the Holy Spirit has given priority over our need to, to contrast, compare, and judge. In her excellent new book, Atlas of the Heart. Brene Brown talks about the, the toxic dangers of comparing yourselves to others. She says, quote, Comparison is the crush of conformity from one side and competition from the other. It's trying to simultaneously fit in and stand out. Comparison says, be like everyone else, but better. End quote. Church, I hope you can hear in that the impossible place that, that comparing yourself to others puts you in. Paul offers a better way. The gospel of Jesus Christ offers a better way, the way of grace, a way to play our unique role in a larger whole. And, and as we do so, may we be blessed by how the Holy Spirit takes shape in our lives and how we achieve more together for the common good because that is our focus rather than the, the defensive judgmentalism that comes with comparing ourselves to others. Friends, this is a place of grace. Let's see what God can do when we give ourselves over to it for the common good. Would you pray with me? Gracious God, we confess that we feel an urge deep within to see how we stack up, how we measure up to all those around us. Help us realize that this is the way that leads to death, but you offer a way that leads to life, a way of grace, a way that 
Let your spirit work through us for something far greater than our own individual achievements. Something you are building here on earth, just as it is in heaven. Help us to give ourselves over to it, Lord. We pray these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, friends, as we come to our hymn of response, I want you to know that, that the doors of the church are open. This is your time to respond to whatever God might be doing in your heart. Perhaps you've fallen victim to, to comparing yourself, uh, whether that be at church or in some other situation in your life. And that's a, uh, something you want to grow beyond. It's op your opportunity to, to take a step forward in, in your faith uh, and learn to, to live by the rhythms of God's grace and God's Holy Spirit working through you rather than looking to your right and your left to see how you stack up. If you want to have a conversation about that or, or any other uh, next step in your spiritual life, I hope you'll reach out to me so that we can talk together. Friends, I invite you to uh, sing out as we sing Friends, may you hear this benediction. Go forth with all the gifts God has given you. Let God's Spirit work through you, not to be better than someone else, but to join others for the common good. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.